Nissan is a Japanese brand known all over the world as a leading car maker. They are associated with quality and heritage in the world of motoring. But did you know that Nissan did not even start with building cars? Instead, they started off as warplane builders for the Imperial Japanese Army. And why did their former CEO have to smuggle himself out of the company in a barrel? To find out more about this historic company, we have to turn the clock back to the 1930s. But before we do that, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on brands you love. Origin To understand the beginnings of Nissan, we have to take a trip back to early 1900s Japan. It is here where a man by the name of Yoshisuke Aikawa founded the Nippon Sangyo Holding Company. It was this company name that was later on abbreviated as Nissan on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. In 1931, Aikawa purchased majority shares in the DAT car manufacturing company and merged it along with his existing Tobata Casting Automobile Parts Department. This merger was named as the Nissan Motor Company Limited. Aikawa wanted to move the business to manufacturing cars for the mass market, but the existing shareholders of Tobata Casting Automobile Parts Department were not interested. So he used the funds from his holding company to effectively buy them out of the company. The DAT company was already making military trucks before the takeover, and their first venture into making a small car was the Datsun, which translated to Son of Dat. This was a small car built for the masses, and after the Nissan takeover, this was renamed to Datsun because Sun in Japanese translated to loss. The firm completely changed its focus to producing trucks and military vehicles starting in 1938. During World War II, Nissan produced engines, trucks, and aircrafts for the Japanese military. The company's main facility was relocated to China after Japan established itself there, where it continued to make machinery for the Japanese military until it was taken over by American and Russian forces. The main Nissan factories were taken over by Allied occupying forces in 1945. At one plant, they permitted the production of Nissan and Datsun vehicles to resume, but Nissan's use of the other facilities was not resumed until 1955. The organization briefly went by the name Nissan Heavy Industries Corporation for two years, from 1947 to 1948. The 1950s for Nissan was a period of expansion. The company aimed to be a global leader in car manufacturing. Nissan's management understood that regions like Australia and the US would benefit from the Datsun compact vehicle line by meeting the need for smaller, more fuel-efficient cars. They debuted the cars in 1958 and sold a few vehicles in the U.S. at the Los Angeles Auto Show. Nissan Motor Corporation USA was formed in 1959 and led by Yutaka Katayama. By the 1970s, Nissan grew to become a major player in the exporting car business. Models from the company such as the Fair Lady Roadster, Datsun 510, and the iconic 240Z helped the company grow at a rampant pace. Nissan even dabbled in the world of competitive racing with the race-winning 411 series of cars. The oil crisis of 1973, aided by the Arab War, increased demand for fuel-efficient compact cars in place of the gasoline-chugging behemoths that were in demand before. Nissan made the decision to build a plant inside the boundaries of Europe in order to avoid export taxes and delivery fees to its consumers in Europe. Due to its proximity to important ports and local access to a highly skilled workforce, Sunderland in the United Kingdom was chosen. The facility, which was finished in 1986 under the name Nissan Motor Manufacturing Limited, has since earned the highly desired title of being the most productive facility in Europe. The UK factory is where the Nissan Note, Micra, and Qashqai are all made. But the good times won't last much for Nissan, as nearing the close of the millennium, the company would be in a slump and keep losing money. Nissan, in March 1999, would enter into a partnership with French carmaker Renault as part of a global deal to help each other. As part of the deal, Carlos Gozen, the former chief operating officer of Renault itself, would be appointed as the new chief operating officer at Nissan. Later that year, Nissan would fire almost all its top Japanese executives and Gozen was tasked with turning around the company's fortunes. Nissan Revival Plan Under Mr. Gozen, a plan would be formulated for reversing the struggling company's fortunes. This plan was called the Nissan Revival Plan. Nissan has recovered under Gozen's Nissan Revival Plan, which many economists consider to be one of the most remarkable corporate turnarounds in history. Nissan's profits have reached record highs, and its Nissan and Infiniti model lineups have been revitalized. Nissan launched Nissan 180 in 2001, building on the success of the NRP. 
with the goals of selling 1 million automobiles, achieving operating margins of 8%, and paying off all automotive loans. Gozen has received praise in Japan for turning around the business amidst a struggling Japanese economy. Gozen and the Nissan turnaround were depicted in manga and popular culture in Japan, and Emperor Akihito recognized his contributions to Nissan's revival by giving him the Japan medal with blue ribbon in 2004. Also, do you know why their car, the Nissan GTR, is called Godzilla? This was also the period during which Nissan launched quite possibly their most popular car, the Nissan GTR. This car became an icon for petrol heads all over the world and was featured numerous times in movies and TV shows. It got the name Godzilla as from 1990 through 1993, the R32 version of the car won every single Japanese touring car championship. Along with significant victories in Europe and Australia, this winning streak led one Australian magazine to refer to the quick Nissan as Godzilla on its front cover. This name stuck with race fans all over the world who now affectionately call the GTR Godzilla. He was voted Man of the Year 2003 by Fortune Magazine's Asian Edition and also served on the boards of Alcoa, Sony and IBM. Gozen became CEO of Renault, Nissan's partner and shareholder, in 2005, succeeding Louis Schweitzer while remaining CEO of Nissan. But the Gozen era at Nissan would also come to a very dramatic ending, as on April 1, 2017, Gozen resigned as CEO of Nissan, but he remained the company's chairman. On November 19, 2018, he was detained at Tokyo International Airport on suspicion of underreporting his pay and flagrantly misusing business resources. Nissan's board unanimously decided to remove Gozen as chairman of the company on November 22, 2018, with immediate effect. At first, Renault and the French government stood by him and assumed he was innocent until proven guilty. Gozen was forced to step down as chairman and CEO of Renault on January 24, 2019, when they ultimately decided that the situation was intolerable. Gozen was re-arrested in Tokyo on April 4, 2019, while he was still free on bail that had been granted in early March on fresh charges of stealing money from Nissan. Nissan shareholders decided to remove Gozen from the board of directors on April 8. On April 25, he was once more given a bail release. Renault discovered 11 million euros in dubious expenditures by him in June, which prompted a French police probe and raids. Facing tough criminal proceedings against him in Japan, Gozen did the unimaginable. Gozen violated the terms of his release on December 30, 2019, when he escaped from Japan to Lebanon via Turkey with assistance from an American private security contractor who helped conceal him inside a musical instrument box. Interpol sent Lebanon a red notice on January 2, 2020, requesting the arrest of Gozen. Since his escape, he has been the topic of a TV series in Europe, published books, and has been the subject of numerous interviews with the media. The sheer amount of craziness in this escape story broke news all over the world and has become a bookmark in pop culture. This whole ordeal clearly impacted Nissan at large, and its shares fell heavily, and the overall outlook for the future seems grim. The Future Troubled by slumping U.S. sales, aging models, and a product cycle that's out of sync, the Yokohama-based company is on track to announce on Tuesday its lowest annual operating profit in a decade, raising the possibility of a dividend cut. The outlook for the current fiscal year to March 2020 probably won't be any more promising. Chief Executive Officer Saikawa has yet to announce a turnaround plan since the arrest of former Chairman Gozen in November, and people familiar with the matter say there's internal strife over whether he's the right executive to fix Nissan. Alliance partner Renault SA may not look too favorably on Saikawa's reappointment if he continues to oppose a merger, said to be backed by its own chairman, Jean-Dominique Senard, who is also a Nissan director. Future EV Models With investments totaling 2 trillion yen over the following five years, the company plans to accelerate the electrification of its vehicle portfolio and rate of technological innovation by placing electrification at the center of its long-term strategy. This, along with the planned launches of 23 new EV models by 2030, is aimed at getting a foot in the growing EV market. Models like the Surf Out, Box Out, and Max Out gives Nissan fans hope that the company can once again bounce back to its former glory. Are you excited about the EV models Nissan plans to launch? And do you think the company is on track for success? Drop your opinions down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video to all your petrol head friends.